Hey everybody, I'm Andrew from the Flutter team, here to tell you about Flutter's Cupertino package and how you can use it to build apps that iOS users feel right at home with. The Cupertino package is built and maintained by the Flutter team, and it ships with the SDK. So if you've got Flutter on your machine, you've got Cupertino. Crack it open and you'll see a bunch of stuff. There are several dozen widgets like Cupertino Action Sheet, Segmented Control, and Cupertino App. There are some definitions too, like Cupertino Colors, and some things that aren't used directly but still play an important role, like page transition animations. All these things combine to give you the ability to compose interfaces with Flutter that iOS users feel comfortable with, that look and act the way they expect. Disabled buttons are the proper color, pop-ups appear from the right direction with the right speed, and when the user instinctively swipes to dismiss one, away it goes. That's what the Cupertino package is built for. All right, let's hop into an editor and get some code going. We can start with the widget that serves as the root of all things Cupertino, Cupertino app. Alrighty, so here's my empty Flutter app. I'm gonna add Cupertino app right here. And this provides me with theming, a navigator, text direction, all those other basic in every app kind of widgets. And I'll give it a home screen widget as the home route, which means I should probably make a home screen widget. So let me do that now. Now let's, uh, let's start this off with a Cupertino page scaffold. This is gonna be the first thing people see when the app starts and let's just do a little hello world here so I can run it and, and make sure everything's working. So center and then I'll put a text in here with hello world. Let's get that hot reload and there it is. So we got a tiny, tiny hello world. Let's fix that by putting a text style from Cupertino theme to work on this widget. Uh, it'll look for the Cupertino theme for this context, which ends up being the default one created by that Cupertino app widget. There we go. I can also give my own theme to Cupertino apps. Let me show you how that works. Cupertino app has not just text themes, but background colors and swatches and various other stuff. I'm just gonna amp up the text theme I'm working with here. There we go. So I'm gonna set the font weight to bold here. And then I'll jack up the font size to 70. And hot reload gets me what I'm looking for. Uh, you know what, let's actually change the color here just to show how that works. Cupertino Colors provides constants for a bunch of common shades for iOS. So I'm gonna use Action Blue, or Active Blue rather. And when I reload, I get blue. So that's Cupertino app. Now let's dig into another widget you just saw, Cupertino Page Scaffold. If you've used the Material Package, you know there's a single widget called Scaffold. Here in Cupertino though, there are actually two. And that's because the two packages use slightly different navigation paradigms. Material just has a single stack. If you want to go into a detail screen or something, that new screen goes right on top, covering up the previous one. iOS, though, uses separate stacks for tabbed screens, so you can go several screens deep, but still switch back and forth to another tab. So it has two scaffolds, Cupertino Page Scaffold for simple pages, and Cupertino Tab Scaffold to support tabs. Let's get back in the editor and see how they can be used together. All right, first let's replace the single page scaffold with a Cupertino tab scaffold. There we go. So that takes two important parameters, a tab bar and a tab builder. For the tab bar, I can give it a Cupertino tab bar, and that takes a list of items. And these are actually gonna be the same bottom navigation bar item widgets that Material uses. They're out of the widgets package rather than the Material, so it's easy to use them with Cupertino as well. So that gets an icon, so I'll just use a book. Let me come up with, a, I'll use articles here as a nice fake name. And the only thing better than one nav item is two, so I'll make a second one. Let's make this one views, so we can use an I, and then I'll change this text to say views. There we go. All right, now it's time for the tab builder. This is the builder function the scaffold will use to build the contents for the actual screens. So it gets a context and an index, depending on which tab is, and which navigation item is selected at the time. And I'm just gonna return a text here. There we go, just to make sure this is working. And let's see, I'm gonna drop the index in here to the text so we can see the, which tab page we're on. 
There we go. This is just a dummy text field though, so let's let's put something more interesting in here. Uh, Cupertino Tab View is the widget that is actually designed to be used here, and it works with the tab scaffold to make multi-stack navigation work. Inside that, I can put a Cupertino page scaffold, which will give my tab view some things that it needs. One of those is the navigation bar across the top. I can use Cupertino navigation bar here, and in the middle of it, I'll put a title that's based on which tab is active. So either articles or views based on that index. And the last thing the scaffold needs is its content. And I'm just going to use a text here to identify the page we're on. There we go. Just use the index there. And oh, let me clean up some of these commas and get this formatted nicely. There we go. And let's use that text style from before so everybody can actually see the text when I hot reload in a second. There we go. And there's my hot reload. All right. So now I've got tab zero and tab one, articles and views working. The navigation bar and tab bar are both in place, respecting the safe area and looking pretty sharp. Now that the scaffolds are in place, let's add some navigation. Because Cupertino is built with Flutter's Navigator and Route classes, you can use the same APIs for navigation as you would with any other app. All right, back in my scaffold, let's wrap the text in the middle of the screen with a button. And we'll give this a nice font size here. Every button needs an on-press callback, so I'll drop one in. It's just a void function. If I'm going to navigate to a details screen, I, I first need to make that screen. So let me scroll down and I'll make some widgets for it. We'll call this uh, detail screen. And let's see, so this will be a page. So let's put a page scaffold in it. And we can add the navigation bar just like this. And for middle here, we got to give it a title. So we can call it details. Of course, that needs to be a text widget rather than just a, a straight string. All right. And for the child, for the contents of the details screen, I can, I can use a text widget, but I'd like the details to identify which tab we're on, you know, so we can, we can see how the navigation works here. So let me come up here, and I'm going to add a field to store which subject this is the details screen for. So just a simple, simple string. Get it in the constructor there. Now I can come back down and put that field to work in the text widget. And I'm going to give this a text style as well. Make sure it's nice and big. There we go. Format this up. Get that saved. All right. Now I can come back up to that button's on press function. I can get the navigator for the context, which is the one created by Cupertino Tab View. That's how I get the separate navigation stacks for each tab view. And I just need to use this builder given to Cupertino page route to build my detail screen. And based on which tab is the active tab, that index value, I'm going to pass a different string to the detail screen to use as its topic. Cool. All right, let's hot restart. There we go. And when I click this button, I get a detail screen. Uh, I can actually go up and hit this button to dismiss it. If I launch it again, I can also swipe to dismiss. Those Cupertino behaviors that you would expect are there. And you can also see I have separate stacks. So I have details here on one tab, but I have the original screen on the other, and I can go back and forth. Cool. So we've got a detail screen, and we can use it to play with some widgets. The Cupertino package is full of buttons, switches, and sliders, probably the kind of thing you came to this video to see. So let's get back in the app and get a couple of them in the mix. All right, back on the details screen, and first things first, let's convert this to a stateful widget so that I can track some stateful data here. IntelliJ can do that for me, which is great. There we go. And I'm just going to get rid of this text here and I'm going to start replacing it with a column and a row 
just so I can have a, you know, a label and a switch next to each other. We can see those. So I'll put an expanded around the text. And uh, label it appropriately. And then I'll drop in a Cupertino switch right here. Cupertino switch needs a value to tell it whether to start on or off, and so I'm going to need a field for that. So I'll come up here and I'll add a boolean and just call it switch value. We'll start it off as false. And then I can come back down here and use it as the value in this constructor. Here we go. Now I can add the onChanged function, which is called when someone taps on the switch. I'll use it to call setState to update that switch value field, which will also rebuild the stateful widget, including this Cupertino switch. That's part of the pattern for switches on both Material and Cupertino. They animate the movement, but you're still in control of whether a tap is actually flipping the switch, because your containing widget is responsible for doing those rebuilds. All right, let me hot reload and launch the details screen now and it's blank. That's probably because my column is the height of the entire screen, which means my switch is under the navigation bar. So let me fix that. I should mention, by the way, that a lot of widgets, like List View, will automatically adjust for the height of the navigation bar, but you can still put content underneath it by using rows and columns directly. There we go. Let me get a little padding in here as well, just to bring those in from the edges. There we go. And let's click this. Yep, there's my working switch. So that's a basic Cupertino switch. And uh, let's try one more control. How about a Cupertino action sheet? Let me go ahead and just clear out all of this. There we go. Cupertino action sheet can be used as a modal. So I'm going to add a button to launch one. There we go, just launch action sheet. And again, avoid callback for the on pressed. And in here, I'll use show Cupertino modal pop-up. That's a top-level function provided by the package to launch a modal widget. It takes a context and a builder. I can reuse the current context there. And for the builder, that gets its own context. There we go. And inside here, I'm going to create and return a Cupertino action sheet. That's going to need a title. So I'll just call it uh, some choices. Keep it simple. It also takes a list of Cupertino action sheet actions, which are the choices displayed to the user, as you'll see in a second. Let me put one in here. There we go. So that gets its own child. So I'll give it a text widget. This is the text that gets displayed for the choice. And it has an on press callback that'll get invoked if the user picks that choice by tapping on it. Inside the on pressed, I'll use the navigator to pop the action sheet off the navigation stack and then return the chosen value. In this case, just one. Uh, of course, one choice isn't enough. So I'm going to cut and paste and make this one two and that one three. There we go. And I can even make the first choice default if I want to using is default action. All right. And actually, let me go back up to my call to show the modal and type it. So this is the return value that's going to be returned by the modal. So Cupertino Action Sheet will actually return a value if you use navigator pop with a return, in this case, one, two, three. Since those are ints, I can type the call to show the modal so I get a typed value in response. All right, let me hot reload and hit the button here. And there's my action sheet. I can pick a choice and it dismisses itself. And there it is. So that's Cupertino action sheet. And I think that'll do it for this section of the video. All right, hopefully this video has given you a good tour of the Cupertino package. There's lots more in there though. And I put a couple links in the description below that can help you keep learning. One is for the Cupertino widget catalog and the other points to a sample app that shows off a polished Cupertino interface. So check those out and come see us at flutter.io. Oh, you're here. If you like that video, you could like this one or subscribe Flutter YouTube channel.